Hi, I'm Barry Johnson. I'm here to talk about a very simple, low-cost solar thermal water pasteuriser. It's a collaboration proposal that I'm asking you and anyone else who's viewing to be involved in, and the topic this time is about viralization. The first video was mainly introducing the subject. It's a very simple, low-cost, locally made and virally deployed solar pasteuriser. It heats water to kill bacteria. It's a, technically it's a flow-through design and it could save many lives in the project, in the tropics. And this, this video is about how it might be able to save lives in the, in the tropics. It's not a definite, it's just a might. But if we can overcome the barriers, it could save thousands of lives. Here's the concept and here's the numbers. There's the, the idea of what it is. Stop the video if you want to read it. What is viral deployment? Well, non-viral deployment is where you bring a t technology to a developing country and it doesn't copy. So, for example, there are 30 or so solar water pasteurizers already around the world. They're high-tech, they've been put there, they work really well, they save lives, but nobody's copying them, nobody's pirating them. Um, statistically, if you put in 10 and even only 9 were copied, it would eventually die out, it wouldn't be self-sustaining. Viral deployment self-replicates sustainably, where if you put 10, copy, 10 installations in to different places around the world, and that's the ambition of this project, to put 10 installations around in, in ideally three different continents, it would generate at least 11 successful copies very quickly, and it would double well within a year. Doubling the numbers and how fast it doubles is the key thing, of course, to these exponential type growth problems. In viral circumstances, the seeded projects, those 10, succeed. They grow without much input. Huge numbers of lives may be saved. All that is needed is a simple technology which doesn't have barriers to getting the bits together, getting it working, and keeping it working. And then it gets copied. It is encouraging piracy. This is anti all the intellectual property stuff that most of the world is about. What we're trying to do is to get people to copy and own a life-saving technology. The numbers are amazing. Around 1.1 billion people in the world lack access to clean drinking water, and that causes lots of different problems, including diarrhoea. And that, that kills 4% of all deaths worldwide, bad water, and 8% of all people in Southeast Asia and Africa. Across the world, it kills 2.2 million people per year, mostly children in developing tropical countries. You compare that 2.2 million with 1.1 billion people who lack the access and you're looking at 0.2% of a population dying every year. One in 500 dying every year. This project has significant risks of not delivering, but it also has significant risks if it doesn't deliver. So I'm trying to see if it actually can deliver because it could offer very high rewards if it delivers. Could you be interested in taking on this project or somebody you know? The target populations are Lots of rural, tropical communities who are exposed to waterborne infections such as viruses, um, bacteria like cholera, um, worms of various different kinds, and amoebae and, and relatives of the amoebae. They want safe drinking water that's free from pathogens. Can we give it to them? Well, the market viralization that could happen with a simple solar pasteurizer, which is installed easily and doesn't need any cost or, or money to, to keep it running depends on lots of issues how long you actually you know look at look at the the difference between starting the project and then saying how many people have I saved potentially also how many people you put in how often how, how many months it takes for that number to double and obviously viralization would get capped if you actually met that total number of eligible people to whose, whose lives you might want to save that's very optimistic of course but it's always worth putting it in Shortening the doubling time is vital, as the little spreadsheet that's coming up will show you, because mathematically viralization is an exponential growth equation. You can simulate the number of installations. I'm not doing that in the next slide because it's too much. Um, but you can write down the number of people protected and the lives saved. Typically, 0.2% of the people that you save per year will live. So if you were to protect uh, 50, 500 people, after one year, one of those might not have died from having a solar water pasteurizer. So here's the simulation. I'll take it, take you through it uh, bit by bit. 
Let's look at some of the initial assumptions. Let's assume that 10 people are protected for each solar in installation that we put in that's pasteurizing. Could well be more, but let's be pessimistic. And let's assume that we've put in 10 across three different continents across the world. And therefore, the total number of people protected when you start the clock at the year zero is 100. What if you do manage to get viralization? And of course, you may not. You may not get the people in that those areas copying the technology fast. But if you imagine every 12 months they doubled the number of installations, or what if every six months, four months, or three months, what sort of numbers of people would you be able to save in terms of lives at ends of years one, two, three, four, and five? That's the question. And here are the answers. At year five, if you double, your doubling time was 12 months, you'd save 3,200 people's lives, which, or you'd protect that many people. And that's worth about 13 lives saved. If you could double, have a six-month doubling time instead of 12 months, then you would save over 100,000 people, protect over 100,000 people, and save nearly 300 lives. If you could reduce the doubling time from six months to four months, the number of people protected after five years would be about three million and about seven and a half thousand lives would be saved. Now that's getting ambitious. And if you could reduce the doubling time to three months, then you could actually get 104 million people protected and more than half of the available market of people who, who potentially live in the tropics in rural areas where their water source doesn't have toxic chemicals and so on. And has and have the rights and have a sanitation loop that would be closed. In other words, they, they have toilets and so on. So potentially in five years you could reach near saturation in the system. That's very much potentially. You could get no saturation. You might just put in ten installations, protect ten people, nobody copies it, and you just protect a hundred people for a few decades. The whole point is that the technology will work. But will the viralization work? And how fast, if it works, will it work? Viralization has taken place in a number of different solar technologies around the world extremely fast, um, and non-solar technologies like mobile phones. So it can happen. The question is, will it? Those are the numbers of lives potentially saved. I'd like you to join me to think, is this possible? Just to summarize again, the solar water pasteurizer is an, ap an appropriate technology. It's appropriate to the communities, it delivers massive health and other benefits by using renewable energy, it operates at low cost. If it's correctly designed and well deployed, and deployed virally, as I've just been talking about, it could save many, many thousands of lives, even millions of lives, eventually. It's a solar thermal water pasteurizer made locally at low cost. It's powered by the sun, uses the solar heat to kill pathogens, it's made locally with minimal skills or materials barriers. And it's all about overcoming barriers, of course, that, that makes the viralization work. And again, there's minimal cost as well. Can you save lives with this technology? Would you like to help? Contact me. There are two main applications. The day-to-day -day use in the tropics, in, uh, in communities such as riverside and lakeside communities, where people aren't using clean water or they have to use firewood to boil the water that sort of thing. Um, and there's also an emergency relief design of a technology which could be more ruggedized, but really I want to focus on the day-to-day -day use one. Thanks again. I hope the next project and the next video is also of interest. Thanks from Barry Johnston.